live. You like targeted content. You're live. Say what? You're live. I'm live.
hello. Sylvie, hello, Sylvie. Susan, oh, so great. Welcome, everyone. Um, trying to have background music this morning. Maybe give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. Or maybe give me exclamation points if um, it's disruptive. Um, so somatic movement this morning, maybe a, a word or two about that. In my heart of hearts, in my body, heart, mind, I believe that how I define somatic movement is really what asana is about. While this morning I won't teach typical, predictable, classic asana at all, um, it is asana if we go by the definition of steady and comfortable. And I also believe that how we meet the global moment is a direct extension of how we meet our micro moment. And so for somatic movement, somatic experiencing, which is like a trademark term for a kind of therapy, um, which is beautiful, the capacity to go in and not only meet, connect with, feel, not only those epic things, but to actually merge with, in a direct conscious way, the somatic field. And it's very yogic in that, um, it's very yogic in that we already are, like the tale that, or the thing that gets said about we're already enlightened, we just don't know it. We're already in a state of yoga, we just don't know it, that that, is the truth here that for me and following the words of one of my beloved teachers, Amy Matthews, um, body and mind aren't just connected, they're the same. And so to go in and, and feel that, love that, be that, and maybe you can hear my dog scratching at the door. <laughs> I'm gonna let him in. Um, so connecting, embodying the actual unified presence of hierarchy of cellular intelligence that makes up this whole organism. And then we're gonna move it in a variety of ways. So come to lay down, I think, on your belly. We're gonna start face down. I'm gonna let my dog in. I'm gonna lay down. So come to lay belly down. You too, Ozzy. Lay down. And then you're laying belly down. You can um, have your forehead on your two hands or you can turn your head to one side. You can, uh, for our practice today, you won't need anything. Uh, maybe a blanket. Preferably your surface is slidable. You can slide on it. If you have carpet or cork or something else that you cannot slide on, you might lay a blanket down on top of that so you can slide easier. And one more, uh, it's not a disclaimer, it's a shout out. Most of what we're gonna do today, I have downloaded from uh, Amy Matthews, one of my beloveds, through my Somatic Movement Educator Program. So we'll be doing a lot of primitive reflexes, um, developmental theory stuff. It may not name it all, uh, but that's what we'll be drawing from this morning. So as you lay belly down, feel the support of the floor, symbolically the earth under you. And especially connect with where you're touching floor, where your surface meets outer surface, where your outer surface meets an external surface. And notice, if you can, what the cells of your skin, skin cells, and then deep to those skin cells, more dermal cells, sinew, fat, fascia, muscle, where you feel pressure, where you feel gravity holding you, 
Go there. Go right to that outer boundary of you where it meets the outer boundary of the floor. And let yourself merge. Merge with the surface. And if in your knowing mind you can begin to relate to, connect with the cells of your skin and sinew that feel the most pressure, pressure of contact, gravity, weight, and let those cells, invite those cells to call the blood it's happening a little bit because of gravity. And let the blood call the breath. And this very basic presence, this very basic practice of meeting gravity's pull is actually a reflex. It's called tonic labyrinthine. Labyrinthine. Labyrinth. Has to do with the inner ear. Tonic lab for short. Reflex and our ability to sense gravity. It starts in the womb and it lets us rest. It lets us rest. How do you rest? How do you let go? Knowingly, not just you get so exhausted you have to collapse or pass out, but how do you consciously let go? Let the cells call the blood, let the blood call the breath and breathe into the surface you're resting on. Notice how you get heavier with exhales or allow yourself to get heavier with exhales. <clears throat> and put your awareness in what we could call the, the very center of our body, somewhere around the navel. The remnants of where we were originally connected to our mother, the umbilicus and use Use the exhale and use that drawing back, that condensing of the navel area. Feel into that for a few exhales. Low belly, navel area gathers, draws back as you breathe out. And let that belly, navel, gathering, contracting, withdrawing back. Let that pour you, pull you onto one side. One side. I don't care which side, right side, left side. And you could curl in like a baby ball on your side or you could be casually flexed knees and hips or you could be straight. I vote a little softer here because we're still in tonic lab, tonic labyrinthine reflex. And so it's sort of like um, one of those rain sticks, right? Where you tip it and all the contents inside trickle down into gravity's pull. And let's feel that here. So now there's a new surface of you on the floor. Pour down. Pour the prana particles, the awareness particles down to that lowest surface and let the cells there, skin cells, dermal cells, fat cells, muscle cells, bone cells, let those cells call the blood and let the blood call the breath. <clears throat> I 
whether you're breathing big or small, the body will move, it will sway, right? So there's the way that when we breathe, parts of us take up more space, like the ribs expand, the belly expands. But there's also the movement of breath's energy through us and the organ bodies, they sort of slide around each other. Feel for that. So great, hello everybody. I'm talking about my insides, everybody. Whichever side you're on, that lung has a little more weight. And so breathe into that lower lung. Feel how it supports and buoys the heart and the lung above it. And then once again, use that soft undulation of breath. It might be an inhale to sort of pull you forward or an exhale to roll you back, but roll your way, morph your way onto your other side. Take your time so you're moving like at the pace of a glacier. I'm gonna spin around so you can still see me. You don't have to spin around. So a new way to experience, new surface of you on the floor. It might be bonier or curvier than the first side or smoother or softer or more or less comfortable. Simply note, adjust for safety. But if you do land on any <clears throat> like muscly trigger points, outer hip maybe, ribs or outer shoulder, see if you can let the breath and the floor together and the weight of you with gravity, let that massage you. And exhales will give you a little more surface contact with the floor just a little bit, like you're spreading out like pancake batter. And the inhales pick you up a little bit, but let the energy and the attention go in to where you meet the floor. side, the first side, I had more ribs, more waist in contact with the floor. So on this side, I'm simply trying to let the cells of my outer left side, like call the blood, call the breath, answer gravity's call. Maybe you need to let the front side of you fall more or the back side of you fall more, drop more. And from here, from here, keeping most of the body sort of together and that might make more sense here in a minute to begin rolling so we could initiate from the navel like I had you do go from your belly to your side but let the navel take the whole back of you back at once and then roll onto one side try to keep the two sides together front back together so we're rolling in one piece versus a sequential roll which we'll probably do sequential rolling later and if you need a visual, you can pause and watch me for a bit. I'm just going to roll, roll. 
rolling. You could have knees bent or straight. I'm gonna be out of view here in a minute, so. Slow rolling, rolling. Arms can be overhead or tucked under you. But try to feel each surface, front, back, side, surface, sort of meeting the floor all at once. So rolling like a tube or a, a log or a baby. <laughs> but there's this connectedness in the navel that keeps you all together. You could roll in a way where your knees are under you. You could certainly take your limbs up into the air as you roll. So honor your limbs, all six of them, both feet, both arms, head and tail. Keep them integrated into your center as you roll, 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 slow roll. So still keeping the tonic lab, the tonic labyrinth thing, like just falling into gravity at a pace at which your inner ear can keep registering wears down, down, down. And that the spine stays an integrated unit. So we're not twisting as we're rolling. That would be more sequential. That will come later. Super slow, no rolling into gravity. So you're going slow enough that if you roll into furniture or into your pets, it won't hurt anybody. One more minute, just rolling, rolling, rolling. And let's culminate this rolling with going from side to back to side. And if you need a visual, check it out. I'm swinging my arms overhead and my legs long and then the navel sort of pulls everything in. So we're trying to, again, to not do it sequentially. The whole spine, both sides of the body go together. Back to side, curl baby ball on your side. Back to side. You can inhale onto your back, let gravity have you. Maybe pass through star shape and then exhale onto the other side. All six limbs, all six limbs going together. Inhale, star, exhale, side. Inhale, star, exhale, side. And I'm bringing all the parts, so flexing everything. Feet, hands, so little fists with your hands and little feet fists with your feet. Curl in, stretch open, heavy, heavy, curl in. Stretch open, one more time, right, left. <laughs> and we'll meet on our backs, we'll meet on our backs. We haven't been there yet for any amount of time, so let's pause there. And you could be star, all stretched out, or you could be hugging your knees in, or you could be feet on floor, knees knocked together. Pause. And feel like that was a lot. So just let it all trickle down and in. And refining our ability to take in, to deal with what's here. And this is a, in theory, a safe, simple, hopefully comfortable environment for you. And 
And how we meet this flood of information is a direct reflection of how we can meet other floods of information, like the world we're living in now. So let's just let it all be right here as it is. Taking the arms and legs up. And uh, if you've got restriction in the back body, that it's not easy to take your legs up, then you could do one leg at a time and maybe hold with your hands. As many limbs as you can sustain up uh, of our arms and legs, not head and tail. And then, depending on your bandwidth, <laughs> how much access you have to your 20 little digits, make all sorts of shapes and circles and pointing and flexing. If four at a time is too much, then just do two at a time. You know, we're three-dimensional beings, so we've got three planes to move in. And I can sort of demonstrate them here. You can work on this, this sagittal plane, this front to back plane, like a wheel. Or you can work on this um, sort of across the table kind of plane, the transverse plane. But then there's also like this, the side body to side body plane, like a doorway. And then the ability to merge them all to bring the three dimensionality that you live in into your movement. Start to bring in more of your elbows and knees and shoulders and hips and you can grab a limb. So the way if you've ever raised a baby, which I have not, but I've seen them play, they catch a foot, they'll get distracted by their hand So staying on our backs, maybe a little roly, rock and roly poly with spiraling, curling, extending limbs. And you're welcome to make this stronger, bigger if you want to uh, bring in some gentle ab work. You can um, work the legs away from your center. And then the study becomes like how stable can the spine be as you take more weight way out to your edges, way out to maybe to an extended leg. And if you can stabilize the spine there, that's one way to work strength. So now I'm just alternating like a like a really slow-mo bicycle ride, right leg out, left leg out. I'm going backwards. I'm pedaling my giant bicycle backwards. So stabilizing the spine is sort of one indicator of strength, maybe a first stage. Second stage would be if the spine can move with the legs respond but in a controlled way, a way that you can choose. All right, so I can let some of my lumbar spine respond to the demand of the leg, but I'm, I can choose it. I can choose the degree to which I let my spine go. And it might be easier, one leg out versus the other leg out. What you do with your hands, arms, makes it easier or harder. So you could tuck hands under the outer buttocks for a little bit of support, or a lot of support actually, or arms completely out and up and overhead for like no support. In fact, added challenge. Another minute here. 
you want to bring the other two limbs head and tail in. So all six limbs are sort of uh, in the ether for any amount of time. You can come in and out, up and down. I feel like an astronaut in some weird way, like I'm just sort of floating through the atmosphere. We all are. <laughs> <clears throat> on this big blue marble and then landing either in your star shape or hug your knees in or plop your feet on the floor all meet with feet on the floor knees bent arms can be out to the side or sort of up like a V and now rolling sequentially so the obvious thing will be the knees tipping right and left but see if you can actually initiate it from your tail so if I try to turn my tail to the left that's going to send the knees over like a knee drop to the left and feel how it pulls on that right hip so you can keep reaching your tail and let it pull further up the spine and you eventually sequentially roll the hip, the waist, the ribs, shoulder, arm, neck, head. And so you're laying on your side sort of staggered and reaching the tail, maybe right sit bone back and to the right, let it pull the right hip back, the knee, the pelvis, side waist, ribs, shoulder, neck, head. Tail turns or reaches right, that will tip the knees. Keep reaching that tail, let it pull the hip, the lower spine, all the way up to the head. And the arm can either swing overhead or you could just let it drag behind you. The tail returns you, so tail left, maybe left sit bone left, pelvis goes, lumbar, ribs, thorax, head, arm, and repeat. So sequential rolling from your back to your side, sequentially, you got 26 vertebra now, so you've always had 26 vertebra, probably give or take. And so looking for each one to have a turn, literally as you roll, sequentially sequentially so when i teach this and i can actually see people and <laughs> i have no idea what's going on out there uh i see people getting confused they'll get they'll get ahead of the twist right they'll bring their arm around before the rest of the spine is twisted so initiating twist from the tail rolling from the tail and letting it spiral up to the head sequentially so the tail takes you back to the other side, vertebra by vertebra. And then we're gonna pause, pause in the middle, pause in the middle. You could be star shape or baby ball or knock your knees in. We're gonna sustain, we're gonna do this again, but now initiating from the head you could, <clears throat> so the head's a very dynamic, complex part of our body. Uh, five of our, four of our five sense doors are in our head. So you could choose how you want to initiate this from your eyes or your ears, like you're listening to something that pulls the head. Developmentally, the mouth and nose were the first sense doors to sort of direct us. So it could be like mouth or nose turning the head and then let that turn the neck and keep turning the head and let that then pull the upper torso, then the waist, then the pelvis. 
onto your side. And then the head will bring you back. So whether it's nose, mouth, eyes, ears, you might pick one. And the head rolls you back, then the neck, then the thorax, then the lumbar, then the pelvis, then the legs. You keep going to the other side. So sequential rolling, just like before, but initiated by the head. It's actually not super easy. This one's harder for me. To try to keep it sequential. So head initiating sequential rolling from side to side through your back. And what I like to do is build this, build this, to rolling you onto your stomach, onto your stomach. When you get to your stomach, pick your head up. Hello. And then using your head, looking the other direction, let that roll you, pull you onto your side, sequential rolling. All the way to the other side, all the way onto your belly, and then pick your head up. A whole new level. Wow. And then head initiating the rolling onto your side. Hello, onto your back, onto your stomach, pick your head up. Maybe do a little baby locust or a locust baby. <laughs> and then uh, let's keep the sequential rolling, but keep the head up. So now as you look around to the other side of you, you pass through this sort of side lying the shape here I am. You can take a peek if you like. No costume malfunctions. And then I'm going to keep my head up here so it becomes like a half boat as you keep looking over that shoulder and you're rolling onto your belly again. So it's like the middle of you stays connected to ground but the limbs are floating head and tail. I'm using my arms. I'm using my arms. So it's stronger, stronger in the midsection for sure. And you might have enough room that you could keep going the same direction for a few rolls. Like maybe I can too. And then looking the other way. Maybe one more minute. There's no right or wrong, mm -hmm. ever. It's all very contextual. And we're gonna land on our bellies in any way you wish, so. You could be like child's pose or flat on your belly. Could be sphinx pose or face plant or one ear down, whatever. Just land on your belly. Back to tonic lab, letting gravity have you. Let where you meet the floor be of utmost interest. Where you're making contact with the material world in this moment. Let that concentrate you deeply in. You guys keep resting. Um, the relationship between arms and thorax, hands to heart, fingers to ribs. There's many, many, many relationships. 
and one that I've learned through my somatic training I find fascinating. So I invite you to meet me with your hands casually on the floor, sort of in front of your head. Right now my head is up and yours is too if you're looking at me. But we will um, start with sort of the face down and finger by finger, so pinky to thumb, we're gonna feed that inquiry into our ribs and coming up through what we could call a cobra or picking your head up belly down. So go ahead and start with your hands just casually soft on the floor like a baby would have them and have your forehead on the floor. And the pinky in this exercise, in this exploration, relating the pinky to say ribs one and two. So what's it like if you were to push that pinky edge of your hands down and lift your head up just enough that you feel like only the first two ribs or thoracic vertebra one and two are, are in extension. So it's not a very big lift and you're not recruiting all the way down your back. So you give that a few rounds, make that pinky side heavy Bring your head up just enough so ribs one and two feel like they're ascending. And if you raised a baby, you maybe saw something like this. Hopefully you did see something like this. If you raised a baby, then ring finger, ring finger comes into play. So pinky finger, ring finger, then it's ribs, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So maybe not quite to nipple line. Give it a few rounds. Pinky ring finger, taking the most weight, clearly driving down into the floor and then those upper four ribs. Middle finger, middle finger relates to ribs five, six, seven, maybe eight. So middle finger down and you're like halfway, halfway lifting up your whole rib. So ribs all the way up to like rib number eight maybe. So below, below the nipple line for sure. Looking for a sequential relationship as you come up. And once we decide to add the pressure, the weight of the index finger, then we're like ribs one through 10. So index finger in theory can call up ribs eight, eight, nine, 10, ribs nine and 10. And of course, when we add the thumb, so the whole palm, all 10 fingers, it's like all the ribs. Sequentially from pinky to thumb, from forehead to thoracic vertebra number 12. You can certainly bring your hands closer. Depends on what you feel. And as if there was something above you that you really wanted. So from an evolutionary, uh, an evo uh, evolution, from the perspective of evolution, and from the perspective of developmental theory, there's something up there. We want food or attention or connection. So we're skillfully using our supports, the hand in a logical way, sequential way, to build our capacity to get higher up. And then when you're ready, simply land again, let your forehead drop. If you need to roll around or motor out or somehow reset, take the time to do that now. I'm just checking the time. Okay. 
Uh, bring your head up again in the same way, using your fingers, using the sequential organizing of the ribs. And then with your eyes or your ear, go ahead and like look around to the right, side bend the spine to the right and pull that right knee up towards your elbow. And then undo that, re-extend that right leg, use your eyes to go around to the other direction, side bending to the left and bend that left uh, knee up. And you can reach through the toes to re-extend that leg, looking around to the right, pull that knee up. And just this, you go as fast or as slow as you want. You linger on one side, you can stay there as much as you want. So there's a lot going on here at the level of the hip, certainly working the pelvic half, the hip socket, but could you also include your tail? So like there is a side bend the tail is swinging towards that bending knee. So you get a C curve in your spine. And so far I've invited you to sort of move everything together. If we meet over here on the right, and there's a C curve in the spine to the right, can we let the head lead now? So the knee is gonna be a, a byproduct of initiating the head to C curve to the left. So the head comes around to the left before the knee does, and the head swings around to the right. So then it's like we're an S shape before we're a C curve. So you're sort of serpentining the spine and the legs, pelvis, tail is at the end of that. So it's like C curve as the head swings around a little S in your spine. Can you feel that moment before the tail follows and the legs respond to a C, to an S, to a C, to an S, to a C, to an S, to a C. And let's pause again on the right. <clears throat> pause. <clears throat> so check it out. I can get either the inner edge of my foot on the floor. I can also try to get the sole of my foot on the floor. That's really hard. Uh, uh, uh. Or you can sort of stick the top of the foot on the floor. If you can get some stick, then can you push that foot into the floor and send the body a little bit forward? The leg ends up straightening out, and then you bend the other leg. Resist the urge to pull with your arms. It's not about that. It's about propelling with your leg. And so you'll go C curve to C curve, and maybe C to S, to see as you sort of ambulate, you're not ambulating, you're locomoting, you're locomoting via the back leg. Hi, <laughs> here I come. Um, I don't have a lot of space. Maybe you guys have a lot of space. Um, so I'm crawling forward as far as I can. And then I'm gonna go backwards with my hands. So extending both legs back. And just like the legs, one hand at a time pushes. And that sort of fishtails me back. My right hand pushes, my legs swing a little left. Left hand pushes, my legs swing a little right. <laughs> then forward again by way of the legs. Try not to pull with your arms. It's really easy to pull with your arms. It's really hard not to. So we could call it army crawl, but I think in army crawl they use their arms. It's really um, called, technically it's called 
homologous of the lower, homologous of the lower to go forward here, and then homologous of the upper. A um, homologous movement is like upper body relationship, right to left here, right arm to left arm has this um, cross the midline experience. And then homologous movement of the lower, it's like leg to sacrum to other leg, leg to pelvic half to sacrum to other pelvic half to leg. So it's a lower body movement right to left to go forward. And in a way, if you pause, it's sort of like side angle, right? There's a way in which this could be like side angle. So it's a side to side movement initiated by the lower limbs. And then when you go backwards, a side to side movement initiated by the upper limbs. And see if there's a natural way, there is, I'm not gonna prescribe it. Um, but when you pull one knee up, let's just pause here, pull one knee up. I got my right knee up. If you tuck your left toes under, and what if we push, push with the right shin, reach with your left arm, and pull with your left arm, and then maybe you're up. Oh, let's try that again on the other side. <laughs> Belly down, left knee out. Extend a little bit that right arm forward. So like right arm is reaching, left foot's pushing. Right arm's gonna pull, that right knee comes up, and then here we are, crawling. You wanna go down, try that again. Right knee bent. Right hand close, left arm far. Left hand will pull, right foot will push. And then the right hand reaches as you come up. I'm gonna go right back down. Left knee is close, left hand is close, right hand's a little far. Left foot pushes. Right hand pulls. And the left hand can reach and the right knee comes under. Give that a few more rounds. You guys need me to say it again. If we have right knee out to the side, right hand's close, left hand is far, right foot pushes, left hand is gonna pull. And that right arm reaches and you bring that left knee under. Left side again. Left hand is close, right hand is far. Left foot pushes, right hand's gonna pull. Left hand reaches and you pull that right knee under. From hands and knees, let's try. Right foot steps, left hand reaches and you come to stand. And we'll reverse that. Left arm up, step your left leg back, lower your left knee, all fours. Step left foot forward, right hand reaches, come up. Reach the right leg back, you can reach right arm up for balance. Right knee lands, all fours. Left foot steps, right hand, oh, did we just do that side? So going right to left, up and down, from hands and knees. One leg forward, opposite arm up. Now we're in contralateral. Next time, maybe not next time. Let's do this a few more times. 
right foot, left hand, and up, reverse, and all fours, left foot, right hand, and up, and reverse, and all fours, one more time each side, right foot, left hand, and up, maybe you don't touch with the left foot, and you go back down, and all fours. Left foot, right hand, you come up, and maybe you don't touch. Pause all fours, you can either sit and chill or go to child's. You can even do a down dog if you want. Just a couple more things here before we're done. You come to hands and knees, and this is sort of like cat cow but different. In your cow back bend, I'd like you to have your toes tucked under, bend your elbows, sort of like a crouch, and then the cat with a rounded back, and we just straighten all your limbs. So it's like cat on steroids, and then like crouching cow. Cat, crouching cow, steroidal cat. So the, the gig here is all the joints of the arms and legs mostly are flexed. Hands not so much. Spine is extended and then spine flex and the four limbs extend. standing, however you want to get there, however you want to get to standing, take your time to evolve to standing. <clears throat> I can't see anyone, but I imagine you're just adorable as hell. That is so weird, this business we're up to here. So <clears throat> from standing, I mentioned you likely have 26 vertebra. Some of you might have 27 or 25, just depends. But this is another sequential movement, starting at the top. So starting from like, if we can make the ear hole a turn dial, right? And I want you to start to flex. So it's like, if you could put your forehead in your nose, and your nose in your mouth, Maybe you're like at the AO joint. Before I go any further, both front and back of you are gonna lift. Like an ocean wave, when it crashes, both the front and the back of it are going the same direction, just the back of that ocean wave is going faster. So front and back of you are lifting, even as you go forward. So that top vertebra, as it bows forward, everything underneath is lifting up. And then we try to get cervical vertebra number two, and then cervical vertebra number three, and four and five, and six and seven, thoracic vertebra number one, and so on. But chances are, so I'm taking a while to set this up, chances are you'll have two or three or five vertebra that want to go in one big chunk. I sure do. So I'm trying, we are trying, I'm inviting you to try to go vertebra by vertebra which means you might have to pause. Like for me, I got a couple neck vertebra that have an unhealthy relationship, like C3, 4. So I wanna get a little bit of movement there. So it's almost like I need to lift my vocal cords back into my neck. Oh yeah. And as you curl down vertebra by vertebra, I have another chunk of vertebra on my thorax that wanna to go together. So I have to really lift my heart back into my back ribs. 
So the invitation is you flex down. It's a forward bend, but we're starting from the very tip top of the head. You're trying to roll down. You might have to bend your knees to get at those little vertebra, vertebral joints. You may not get all the way down. You might roll back up because you need a break. I do. So when you go down, head leads. Mm -hmm. And when you come up, it's like you root the tail down and the head is the last thing to come up. So head leads the way. And then the tail will initiate your uncurling. And even if you don't touch every vertebra on the way down, but you just need to go down and forward bend and dangle, do that. So like, I'll do that. Oy. But then the tail brings you up. So I'm dropping my tail and I'm rolling up. A lot of people have a lot of neck stiffness, upper back stiffness. If you can truly concentrate the movement one vertebra at a time, likely you're going to clear some of that out. You're going to hopefully get into the parts that don't move much and bring a little bit more balance to the parts that move maybe too much. Once the top of my head faces the earth, I just let it go down, rounding in between head and tail as I go. Yep. Tail drops and that rolls you back up. So we're doing flexion. Right, this is flexion of the spine, vertebra by vertebra, in theory. I'm going to do one more before I add extension. This is another sticky place for me in my thorax. Too much back bending in my youth, too much stupid back bending. Soften your knees as much or as little as you feel like it helps you get into those less mobile places. <laughs> so before we do extension, let's just pause. Let's just pause and standing or you can keep going forward and coming up. I vote pausing, feeling, yoging, connecting. Now let's revisit the side body. So we were doing it on our bellies, like this C curve, head and tail go the same way. And to try to sync it up, so like head and tail as poles, and they'll curve with the same duration, the same intensity, the same trajectory to one side, and they right, rewrite, reorient, pole star themselves, north star themselves, and then to the left. And so I'm initiating this movement, me, right now, from the head and the tail. From the head and the tail simultaneously. So then it's like top and bottom vertebra, and then just below and above and just below and above. So slowly bringing it to the center. And you have to, I recommend, you don't have to do anything, but I recommend you really look closely because there's a whole different thing going on when I go one way compared to going the other way. And this is initiating from the head and tail, right? There's many other places we can initiate from. So what if we pause and initiate from the center? 
and then it ripples to the edges and then the center and then the center almost like um i don't know what it's like <laughs> i envision like old school gong show days where they brought that big hook out sort of pulled the people off stage Oh dear. <laughs> okay, pause, that's enough of that. Um, now, head leads. So just like belly down, it's gonna be like C curve, S curve. C curve, head leading, S curve, C curve, S curve, C curve. So I think this was like a dance back in the day or something. I don't know, still could be. But the head leading the serpentining vertebra by vertebra. So neck, thorax, lumbar, tail, cervical, thoracic lumbar tail, seaweed dance, C-curve, S-curve dance, snaky dance, pause. Can you lead from the tail? It's much harder for me. Tail leading. S curve, C curve, S curve, C curve, S curve, C curve. <laughs> try it again, try any of those. So let's just take like two minutes for whatever calls. I'm gonna stay with the tail leading. S curve, C curve. Pulls you in, yeah? We have a lot of time to go in. I vote we get better and better and better at it. I saw something about CO2 emissions, like being cut in half since the virus. So there are silver linings. Okay. Shake that loose. <clears throat> Pause. Check it out. Two more things. You could also stop here and walk away, enjoy your day. But let's do the other plane. So twisting from the head. And then the head. Oh, let's let the tail bring us back. All right, so head turns, neck, ribs, waist, hips, and tail brings you back. And you know, what? it breaks my heart a lot when I hear in yoga teachers say, don't do things from the head. Well, guess how we got here? <laughs> it's like, oh, I want that thing over there, which was probably food or sex, and it got us here. So use your head, use your neck. I mean, don't do it so it creates strain. Don't strain your head and neck, but don't strain by not, right? Don't create other strain by leaving it out. So head leads you in, and tail pulls you out. You could try the other way. Tail takes you into the twist, and then the head pulls you out. Tail, head, head, tail, head, tail. Relax, let it go. Now, um, extension. So, weight in your heels. 
And I vote that you pick a spot on the wall and as, as if it was a moving spot or like laser beam, slide it up the wall with your eyes towards the ceiling, towards the spot, maybe right above you or just in front of above you and then reach your face up, reach your heart up, maybe so much the tiptoes or the heels come up. And then with an exhale, heels, tail, drop and pulling you back. So if you need a visual, check it out. I'm letting my eyes lead the way. And if that feels too fiery or too strong, you could let your nose lead the way. And then it like pulls tonsils, pulls neck, pulls heart. And then I'm trying to reach so much that it pulls my heels up. And then dropping heels and tail, bringing it all back to neutral. If you get pain or weirdness, only go as far as you can where there's no stress or strain. Like, can you do it vertebra by vertebra from like the back of your throat? And if you get weirdness in your neck, stop just in front of that and see if you can like a puzzle work through it. So there's a sense of connectedness of the reaching up of the face that pulls your whole spine up so much it pulls your body up and then you know earth calls and the heels and the tail drop and it brings you back into your navel presence navel center Could maybe even turn this into sort of an undulation. Nice and gentle. Two feet on the ground. So much surface area, right? The whole heel pad is quite big. Follow the pinky blade from outer heel to pinky toe ball mound and then sweep your awareness across to the big toe ball mound, plant that down. So heel, pinky toe, big toe, the three corners of the foot. I teach three. I follow the BMC model and one of my beloved Amy Matthews, three corners of the foot, much more stable than four. But another tidbit here to leave you with, the circumference of the feet. So if you look down at your feet and if you drew a big circle, including both feet, and that reflects the circumference of your pelvis. So just note here, if you bring weight back into the heels, that relates to the back of the pelvis and you might feel the back of the pelvis get heavier as the back of your heels get heavier. And if you sway the weight maybe to the back outer right heel, the back outer right side of your pelvis gets heavier. And if you slide that weight to the outer right foot, outer right pelvis follows. So I'm just tracing the circle towards the ball mounds of the right foot, the front right pelvis has the most drag. Left ball mounds, front left pelvis has the most drag. To outer left foot, outer left pelvis gets heavier to the back outer left heel. To the back of both heels. Maybe circle around the other way and I might be going fast. You can certainly pause. So if there's a place where it's like, I can't get my outer foot down or I feel my outer foot, but it, my pelvis is not answering the call, then slow down, back it up, take a pause. But ideally, if you can get the biofeedback in a logical, digestible way, then 
how our feet meet the earth affects our center of gravity. And now I'm just looking for center, center, center. So I have this felt sense of like the lift and the arches of my feet, updrafting my inner legs, pelvic floors, like heart buoyant, bladder buoyant, heart buoyant, brain buoyant. And there's this really rooted felt sense in my legs and a really light, open felt sense, lungs, head, heart. Enjoy. Thank you. I love you. See you tomorrow for some rock and vinyasa. Goodbye, everybody.